Hello and welcome back to New Rockstars. I'm Jessica Clemens and with all this Marvel news, Agatha all along news and Transformers 1 drop in, I bet you didn't know there's a new Spidey project dropping in November, allegedly November 2nd. That's like a little over a month from now. Your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man is one of Marvel's animation's newest projects along with the eyes of Wakanda and who could forget X-Men 97. And I know what you're thinking, that animated Spidey show, I forgot all about that. And yes, you did, which is okay. There are many reasons for you forgetting that we have this show coming out, like Agatha all along or never knowing when Blade's coming. Also, most of the updates we've got about the show were from Marvel Studios animation panel at San Diego Comic-Con in 2022 or at D23 that happened in August. So if you weren't seeking out that information or there, you probably didn't hear much about it. Lastly, while X-Men 97 was a super great animated show, I think many Marvel animated shows feel less impactful to the overall MCU and more focused on a younger audience, so it kind of like zoomed over a lot of our heads. So let's discuss everything we know and what to look forward to in Marvel Animation's new friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. In November 2021, Marvel announced its animated series slate for Disney Plus and three new shows, X-Men 97, Marvel Zombies, and Spider-Man Freshman Year, now known as your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. We don't know why they changed the show's title. I assume they did this to distance it from the film's titles. Freshman Year could imply that it was a prequel to the Spider-Man Homecoming movie, where that Peter Parker is absolutely absolutely a sophomore. During this time, it was believed it would have some MCU ties and would celebrate the character's early comic book roots, according to Variety. Since then, it's less connected to the greater MCU overall, and I'd argue isn't at all, according to Screen Rant, and more like a comic what-if style interpretation of what Peter Parker's origin story would look like, which I'll discuss in better and in greater detail coming up. Jeff Trammell, a known writer for TV and comic books, created the show. His biggest flex, in my opinion, was being the supervising producer, writer, and actor on Cartoon Network's hit show, Craig of the Creek. So I'd say this show is already a good hands. Like Craig of the Creek, it will probably explore and highlight the ensemble characters as much as Spider-Man and will have a lot of heartwarming responses. This show has the tiniest bit of information released amongst the new Disney Plus animated shows. Not much information has come directly from the source, i.e. like Marvel or Jeff Trammell, but from interviews and convention panels instead. And I'm sure this is because they can't really talk about it too much right now. So there might be questions we still have or ideas or theories we'll have to splice together throughout the video. This Spider-Man is a newer Peter Parker, though they share very similar stories like most Peter Parker's do. According to Screen Rant, the show will feature an early high school Peter Parker. Where Marvel didn't reveal Tom Holland, Spider-Man origins, this one will dive into Spidey's radioactive origin story as we've seen before. I fantasize about having my own personal chef, somebody who can do all the hard work of menu planning and meal prep. Someday I'll get there, but in the meantime, I have Cook Unity. Cook Unity is basically a pipeline from your home to dozens of talented chefs that cook delicious, inventive meals, fresh every day in regional micro kitchens, not warehouse production facilities. Their roster of all-star chefs include Food Network alums, James Beard Award winners, and acclaimed restaurateurs. Cook Unity is the first chef to consumer platform that delivers freshly prepared pre-selected meals right to your door weekly. The subscription is super flexible. You can pause, skip weeks, or cancel at any time. It's super easy to do. You can pick from over 350 meals each week based on your dietary needs or what kind of cuisine you like. Monday night, you could have Ruben Garcia's crispy tilapia. Tuesday's dinner could be Esther Choi's teriyaki roasted salmon. Oh. And Wednesday, you could have Stacey Barang's grilled Asian hanger steak. Go to cookunity.com slash nrockstars50 or click the link in the description and you can use the code NROCKSTARS50 to get 50% off your first order of Cook Unity meals to try them out yourself. According to different press outlets and Brad Winderbaum, the head of streaming television and animation at Marvel Studios, they also revealed your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man will feature a situation similar to a What If episode. The story begins like Civil War, but depicts Norman Osborn becoming Parker's mentor instead of Tony Stark. Winderbaum says because of things that happen in the multiverse, because of new random occurrences, it's not Tony Stark who's waiting for him there. It's Norman Osborn, and that sends his life in an unexpected trajectory that collides with him and many unexpected characters in the Marvel Universe. One of these characters will be Doctor Strange. This includes Iron Man as well, for which we saw the art release during D23 this August. The Marvel Animation D23 panel showed footage of the infamous Spidey Bite, and from footage descriptions, a villain. Some online have called it a monster, a symbiote, or venom. From the photo that I've seen, it looks like a symbiote had fallen through a portal. Then we get Doctor Strange following through the portal to fight the symbiote and send it back. Peter Parker here doesn't know who Strange is, but shortly after, a spider manages to escape or fall through the portal, a radioactive spider that bites Peter, which as we know, will be the way he gets his powers. After the spider bites him, the animation style then turns into a comic-inspired look. Before the spider bites him, he introduces himself to Nico Monaru. He'll be one of the many new characters of the show in Peter's life and is actually a member of Marvel's Runaways. The show features a ton of people, as Peter Parker is our neighborhood hero, the people in his life are just as important as he is. So during D23, they revealed the 
the roster of character concept art that I presume are still set to join the show along with Nico. We see who is possibly set to be Peter's friends or just classmates. They've also given first looks at the Mach 1 proto spider suit and what might be featured some new Spidey designs like the future foundation suit as the show continues. If the comic book art style and accurate outfits don't win you over, the casting probably should. Hudson Thames will play Peter Parker, who was also Peter Parker's voice in season one of What If. Coleman Domingo will be playing Norman Osborn, and honestly, that is a great Norman Osborn. And Charlie Cox will be playing Matt Murdock. Other characters to appear are Lonnie Lincoln and Amadeus Cho and others. They will also feature villains like the Unicorn, Chameleon, Scorpion, Speed Demon, Tarantula, Rhino, and Doc Ock. According to the Copyright Office's description for the former Spider-Man freshman year, the first episode will feature Peter readying for his high school orientation, and that day, his life has changed forever. They also revealed last week that this show will be getting a special prequel comic book series written by Christos Gage and drawn by Eric Gepster. They will release a five-issue limited series that introduces young Peter and his supporting cast and some known legendary Spidey villains. I know it sounds crazy to play the introduction to an origin story, but in this comic, you'll be taking the first steps with him as he discovers his new powers, decides to be a hero and gets his name and costume. This comic comes out on December 11th, well after the release of Your Friendly Neighbor at Spider-Man, so you can watch the show first, and if you're hooked, go read the prequel comic. The entire show feels like a comic book made into an animation and then made back into a comic book. It feels like a good way to trick people into reading comics, in my opinion. It's also interesting to note that Peter gets his powers from a spider that fell through a portal, similar to the Into the Spider-Verse spider. However, Miles' portal was built from engineering and science, while this one arrived via a portal by Doctor Strange, aligning it more with magic rather than science. And I wonder if that will play into this part or like what that means for this Peter Parker. The composers also for this series are the same Emmy winning composers for Cobra Kai. So that's a lot of great updates. The show absolutely celebrates Spider-Man's comic works. It also feels like they created a visual like comic book. I know this sounds kind of silly, but it, it truly does. It's not similar to Sony Animation Spider-Verse, but this one feels like they wanted the CG to look like hand drawn like the Iron Giant. It takes inspiration from all Spider-Man we've seen before, but I'm interested in the new characters we haven't seen much of. The new characters we haven't seen in Sony's Marvel or in video games, it feels nerve wracking to even approach this project seeing as Spider-Man is Marvel's biggest hitter. But I think this show gives a different perspective on Peter Parker, especially since this feels like a glorified super long episode of What If. Though this is a celebration of the comics, you've got to surprise me with something different. I'm sure we'll get much more information closer to the release date and following the debut. Until then, be prepared for November and let me know in the comments if you're excited for your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Follow me at Lulu underscore Clemens and subscribe to all three channels in the new Rockstars Network for breakdowns and news coverage of everything you love. I'll see you guys later.